<laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, it has been very, very powerful. I have been so blessed with all this great amount of information coming. And uh, at a point I'm thinking, oh my God, <laughs> Lord, I am so overwhelmed. But the great news there for us is, is not by our might, it's not by our power, that the Holy Spirit will help us. He yeah. is the helper. He's our helper. He helps us to, to do, uh, to be doers of the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I have been given to look at the Titus woman um, again that every one of us has been looking at. And we are going to look at, um, I will specifically be talking about uh, women being busy at home and uh, being productive, not being idle. And uh, that's, that's, that's really it from, the, from uh, Titus 2. So I want us to look at that Titus 2, uh, 3 to 4. Titus 2, 3 to 4. It says, the aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. I was reading from the King James Version. So the key word there for me uh, is when it says sound doctrine. Uh, uh, when I look at sound doctrine, it says is to promote a lifestyle of sound teaching and also to have a good behavior that reflects that you are a godly person. So the uh, the, when we talk about the woman, we are not really referring to the hidden woman, but we are referring to the godly woman uh, because they are really the ones that, that uh, bear the light of God uh, in this perverse generation that we are living in. So as godly women, like everybody has been very amazing in their speeches, pulling down various scriptures and uh, all the things that the Lord would want us to do. So I'm not going to be so deep in this because we have got a, a great amount of information in this. So um, when I just looked at sobriety, when it says that we should be sober, it says that we should not, as godly women, we are not to be drunk or intoxicated like we see in the women of the world. So we are really called to be different people. We are to be sober. And sobriety means that you won't be drunk, you'll be, you won't be intoxicated. You, <laughs> um, you are not given to excess drinking of alcohol and uh, you do all things in moderation and you must be serious minded not just casting jokes anyhow. So, and um, you have to have uh, self-control. As a godly woman, self-control uh, is really what we have, is, is a virtue that we're supposed to, we have so that if we really want to please God in our lives, so we have to have all these qualities. And, um, I really thank God because of what Jesus Christ said, that he is the light of the world and that anyone that walks with him, if you, if you follow Jesus, you will not be in the dark. So Jesus exposes, uh, uh, gives us information and so that we can guide, those information guide our lives. Whatever we do is being guided by the word of God. So the word is a lamp 
unto our feet and a light unto our path. So everything that we do, we have to be based, we'll have to be based on the authority of the word of God, even as um, women uh, that, um, that are home builders, we are building the home, yes. And we know that as our, uh, one of our speakers said that it's really God that builds our home, but we are just co-laborers with God to make sure that his will is done in, uh, in, in, in our families, in our lives and families and in, in our uh, environment where we find ourselves. Um, but the area I'm going to concentrate more is the fact that the women are to be busy. The women are not to be idle. Um, in, in these uh, days, I don't think any woman, like uh, Pastor Marie said, I don't think anybody would like to uh, will be idle. Maybe there are, or maybe other people listening on any of the social media platforms. Uh, there are some people out there that um, live life of uh, idleness. So they don't like to do anything, but we are going to look at certain women in the Bible. For instance, we have uh, people like Miriam, uh, I know that they've been mentioned, people like Miriam, Deborah, and the rest of them, these people were really very busy people. I want us to look at um, Exodus, Exodus chapter 15, verse 20, Exodus 15, 20. the book of Exodus. Um, it says that Miriam, the prophetess, the, the sister of Aaron, took a timbre in her hand and all the women went after her with timbres and with dances. And Miriam answered, and Media answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has it thrown into the sea. So when th this place that we just seen is that Miriam, he, she, was, she was a prophetess and also she was a gifted singer. And like other women in the Bible, we have just, uh, we, somebody has mentioned uh, Deborah. Deborah was a prophetess and uh, she, she judged uh, the people of Israel and also we've just heard that she went to war when, uh, with Barak, when Barak said, uh, if you are not going with me, I'm not going to go. So she went and uh, these were busy women. Uh, they were not women who just stayed at home, not doing anything, just, uh, you know, looking, looking for trouble or causing trouble. They were not this kind of women. So the, the, we are godly women. We are supposed to be busy. We are supposed to do what God wants us to do. When it comes to even training our children or raising the family or doing things, we know that the women, godly women are busy women. We know that uh, even... Uh, raising children is a very uh, busy work. Making the home is a very busy thing. But then it's not the only thing that we are supposed to do. We are supposed to, like we mentioned uh, Deborah. Deborah was a judge. And uh, I'm glad that we have uh, somebody in our midst who was introduced as, as a, a legal practitioner. So Deborah was... Uh, that kind of a class of person. So as people of God, women that are uh, children of God, we are supposed to be busy. We are supposed to be professional people. It, there's nothing that says that a woman should just be uh, a full-time housewife. And some, in these days, I don't think people still do that. Uh, maybe there are, but 
uh, it's not really prestigious anymore for people to say I'm a full-time housewife. There was a time in my own life, even though I, I went to college and I had all that uh, degree, but I came out at a bad time when everybody was, uh, when, when there was a recession and everybody was looking for. So I didn't like the idea of being called um, a, a, a full-time housewife. I didn't like that idea. It made me feel something that I didn't quite like inside of me. So be, women of God are very, very busy, busy people. And um, I want us to look at, I want us to look at uh, other, other uh, influential women we want, I want to see, I want us to see in the Proverbs, Proverbs 31. Uh, there's something that somebody said at one point, she said that she doesn't like the Pro, Proverbs 31 woman because uh, you can't just meet up her standard. You know, the, the Proverbs 31 woman, you cannot meet her standard. I want us to look at that place. And uh, it's talking about King Lemuel. The mother was teaching him sorry i just get here just one it says the words of king lemuel the prophecy of the mother the prophecy that his mother taught him this was a busy woman so as women of god we are very very busy whether it is teaching our children in the house or doing things. It says, this woman, she taught and she said, my son, and what my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. Give not your strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. So it is, our job to teach our children principles, godly principles. It is our job as godly women to put our faith in our children so that they too, they will grow up with that teaching because the Bible says that we should train up the child in the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. I use myself as an example. You know, we may think that our children are not listening. We may think they are not listening when we are teaching them. Um, I have taught my children a lot of things, but I think that they are not getting it. But sometimes when I'm talking with them, they begin to put back my words to, the, to me. And I'm thinking, so you always hear me and you understand. Then, and then they say, yeah. So we, we, it is our duty, our responsibility as godly women for us to teach our children godly principles, whether we feel that they are listening or hearing or not. But we, because we know that God says, if we do that, that that will stay with them in their, in their life. So they're not going to depart from it. So this is what his mother was teaching him. It says that um, give not your strength to women. We know that adulterous women destroy even kings. So it is our responsibility to let our children or even other people, young, like the, here it says we should teach younger women so that they know godly principles they know what they are supposed to do at any given time. So when we are teaching our children, we are telling them the danger of uh, mingling with adulterous women and uh, the uh, uh, danger of alcohol as well, because it talks about alcohol. And there's a particular place in the book of Proverbs, and I, I don't remember where it is now. It says that when you drink, this alcohol, you keep drinking and you don't, even if you get injured, you don't feel the pain, you know, and you are like somebody who is just floating on top of the water 
and then you come back and you say, uh, you know, they even beat me and I didn't feel it. When will I wake up again so that I can go back to my drink? So it is our duty as godly women to really impart God's uh, instruction, the way of God into our children. So the godly woman is not an idle woman. The godly, uh, the godly woman is a woman who is always, just like the, the proverb 31 woman, who is always very industrious, doing uh, things uh, for, for, the, for the good of the family, the entire family. So that is what we are, are supposed to be doing. In verse, in verse 4, in, in verse 5, he says, let's, let's then drink the kings. Let's then drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of, of any of the afflicted. So it was the, the values that his mother taught him as a, as a, as when he was growing up with the mother. That was what he carried into the time he became the king. Now he's remembering the word of his mother and, and, and uh, uh, just telling about the great teaching and instruction that he got from his mother. So he now knows that as a king, you are not supposed to be intoxicated. You are supposed to be sober in the judging, uh, in judging uh, people so that you will not pervert judgment. Um, uh, and again, it says in verse six, it says, give strong drink to him that is ready to perish. So it, has, it is our position to let our children know what a strong drink to, to, will do to somebody. Because it says, give it to somebody who is ready to perish. And we know that if you, if you begin to live this kind of lifestyle already, you, you have determined your future by being, uh, getting into uh, uh, drugs or drinking um, hard substances. So as godly women, it is our responsibility to really let the children know what God would want them to, to do. And uh, it says again, um, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Now, it, it, we know that when somebody is into alcoholism, it, at that point, you don't remember anything. You, you just, you, even what you are doing at that point, you don't know what you are doing. So that is why it is important as women of God that we teach our children first and, and as also ministers of God, we also teach other people, teach other people what God wants them to, to know. So we have a lot of women in the Bible that they were, they were not just housewives. They were very busy people. We've, we, we, have, uh, we have seen Deborah, and there's another lady, another woman in the Bible, she's called Holder, Holder and she was a prophetess, and it was also a wife, and she was advising priests. She was advising priests, and it's, that is found in 2 Kings 22, 14. So she was in that position where people will come and take advice from her. She was a prophetess, so she will receive the message of God and, uh, and, and deliver it to people. So it is, we, we are the ministers of God. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We are the ones that receive messages and then we give it to our world. Even the situation that, that we are having in the world today, the solution really lies in the hand of the people of God because we are the, we are the ones that, that uh, have the word of God. We are the ones that have solution. And I find the word of God as very, very um, all encompassing. There is nothing that is in our life, the experience that we have in life, there is not, no aspect of our lives that we cannot find in the Bible. So whatever the situation 
in your life, we find it in the Bible, whether it's a personal situation or a corporate national situation. So like we have, we, we read about Joseph in the Bible. So Joseph was in a position when, when, when there was going to be famine, he was in a position to advise the king so that the, the you know gave gave the king godly strategies so that they will use it to preserve uh, a food for the next seven seasons when there will be uh, hung, uh, you know farming so this this one uh, you know in this particular season there's going to be abundance and then the other season there will not be anything so they'll be able to uh, store up those uh, food from the abundant season so that they will be able to use it. So the problems that we are having in the world today, the solution really lies with the people of God. That's the way I look at it. And as godly women, we should not detach ourselves from, um, from our community, from, uh, from the problems that we, we should always, you know, sometimes we feel we are not adequate. We can't even, we are not the ones that we talk. We, we can actually pursue those po important positions. We can actually um, develop ourselves to uh, attend those level of uh, space of influence so that we'll be able to influence decision making processes in the, in the, in the, in, in government so that we will be able to offer advice. So I always encourage people who have the calling, then whether it is politics, whatever your calling is in life, I always, uh, I am I, even whether it is politics or whatever it is, I always say, if you want, if you are called into politics, go into politics. So that is what we saw in the Bible. The women in the Bible, where I mean godly women, Jewish women, Hebrew women, because I was looking at uh, the description of women and we found that there are hidden women, the, the, the people in the East. So there, there were hidden women, but they, uh, we were told that the ancient Jewish um, culture did not subjugate women the way the Eastern religion subjugated women. So while the, these women, uh, I want. I just want to uh, get into something that I uh, information that I got. It says that this particular women in the uh, this particular women in this uh, in the eastern really said that they were their, their their minds and their souls were considered underdeveloped. Their minds and their souls were considered underdeveloped. So. And because of that, it says that they were secluded from society. They were secluded from society. They were degraded and they, 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 they were used as, you know, just like a slave and toy by their husbands. So that's what he said. But it talks about the ancient uh, Hebrew uh, culture. It says it did not do the same thing like it did for these other people. It says that these people, the Jewish culture, it made the women, it set the women free. It said that they were educated women, they were refined, they were ennobled, they were, they, they were regarded as cheering and they were regarded as a blessing to their family and to the society. And we can even see it in the type of responsibilities that uh, the women, women like Deborah, Miriam, and uh, the one, the, the one I just mentioned, Hodla, and all the different women that we've seen in the Bible, they were people that came out to really um, do something that promoted the uh, the good of their community. And also, we saw Esther in the Bible when the Israelites, the, the Jews were going to be annihilated. We saw her role, what she did. It was through her influence that uh, that was stopped. You know, all of us, we, we know that story very well. So the women are not just people that should remain dormant 
in the house, you know, watch TV 24 seven, not being, uh, not, not being productive. That's, that's really the key. It, it, it said that we should be women that are productive. I know for all of us here, we are productive. And that is why we are influential. And that is why we're able to, you know, deliver these different uh, lessons from the word of God that we have been able to deliver. But there are people that we need to go out there to teach. There are people who have no clue. We know so much because Jesus said that he came to give us light. To give us light means that we are, we, we have information from the word of God. Information that will make us to make quality decisions. Information that will guide us in when we face obscure situations. So we are able to know that we are, uh, we, are, we are there to help other people see the light that, that uh, we have seen. So as women, we are not just there in the house to, to while away the time to not do anything. We are busy for our family and for our community. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another thing that I want to mention before I know that uh, I, I, my husband is telling me it's time now. Another thing that I want to mention, there is an interesting, an interesting um, uh, story that I saw in the Bible some time ago, very long time ago, and I was so intrigued. We, we, we the uh, women of God, godly women, we are pace setters. We are pace setters. So people should look at us I know with God, our godliness, yes, our faith, yes, but they also should look at us and see what uh, uh, a pen setter is all about. They, when maybe, uh, you know, the, the Bible said that Jesus Christ, when he came, the people that sat in darkness, they saw great light. So we are the light, we are pen setters. So this story that I saw in the Bible, it is found, we're not going to read it, but it is found in the book of Numbers 27, 1 to 11. So they set precedence. Our sister that is a, a legal practitioner, she will lecture us on precedence. So the, these daughters, they were, daught, they were seven daughters of Zelo, Zelo, I never pronounce it well. It said daughters of Zelo Fehad. Mm -hmm. So this particular uh, daughters of Zelophehad, you know, before their case arose, there hadn't been any case like that before. Uh, before that time, it dealt, it, you know, it, it was uh, an inheritance situation. So they, their father died and their father did not have male children. And because their father did not have male children, they came to Moses who was their leader at that time, their judge, and saying to Moses, we want our father's inheritance because our father died not having male children. And Moses did not know how to handle this case. But he went to the Lord in prayer, hallelujah. That's an insight for each and every one of us. There are situations in our lives, we don't know how to handle them. We should never try to handle those things by ourselves. We must always go to God. So Moses, this case came to him. It has never happened before. Nobody has ever had a case like that. So when they went to Moses and said, we want our father's inheritance. And Moses was like, it's always the boys that we have their father's inheritance, but you are girls. They said, no, we want our, you know, but when he went to God, God said to him, listen to the daughters of Zelophehad because they are right. It's, we're supposed to know our rights. Hallelujah. We are supposed to know our rights. So they went there, even though it hasn't happened before, they told Moses. And Moses, God said to Moses, give them their father's inheritance. So by that single act, you know, they set a precedence for uh, future judgment of such cases. 
So we are, we are the light. We throw light in everything, whether it is in opening the eyes of the people, you know, <laughs> and we open the eyes. I have seen myself doing just that in various aspects. And then when I do that and people are doing this and, and, and I, I appreciate that because we are the ones that we make people to think outside the box, what they have never thought about. So from that point on, these people were able to establish this precedence so that other people, other girls that their, that, uh, their father don't have male children can now claim their father's inheritance. So I think that's, that is a very great thing. So Jesus said that he came to open the eyes of the blind. So he, he, he opened our eyes and he uses us to open the eyes of the blind. So, uh, and that's really what we do. And, and because we are godly women right from our house with our husband, with our children. So we, we cannot live in ignorance because Jesus said that we will receive the light of life, it means that we have information. We have information. We have information that others don't have. We apply that information. Our life really depends on how much we know and apply. We know so much in the word of God. And the, and the Bible has told us that it is not the hearers of God's word uh, that are justified. It is how much we can put this to work. 